In fairy tales, witches always wear silly black hats and black cloaks, and they ride on broomsticks. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too. But this is not a fairy tale. This is about real witches. Are you a good witch or a bad witch? Listen very carefully. Never forget what is coming next. The only way to get what you want is to become a human yourself. Real witches dress in ordinary clothes and look very much like ordinary women. That is why they are so hard to catch. Hi. Was that shit? Sorry, I'll do it again. Hello! I mean... Oh, tell me a story. And when I tell you to tell me a story, I really mean welcome home. Because my ears are the Airbnb on the holiday of your dreams. When I say your dreams, I really mean my purpose. Because if you're on a journey, then baby, I'm your designated driver, solid five-star Uber review, you passenger accomplice, willing companion, synchronized compass northwards on the highways of our histories. Have you ever rode the waltzer solo after stuff in your face full of fairground fodder, then you stand up and you try to go out through the end door, pushing at the pool gate, dizzy and sick, afterburner life rising in your throat, earth rotation spinning between your ears? I have a lot. Which is to say I have a lot of experience standing still when the way we move through space is the smallest force trying to push me around. Put another way, I'm a good man in a storm. I'm good at floating, the water never gets above my head, only directly to, I mean I will not let you drown. When the oceans of this world wash inwards and carve coastlines to your front door, my body will be sandbag and sail. It's been a while since I've had to bail out the storm, I mean I won't bail out on you. If you ask me, I will carry you over every horizon, which is to say, yeah, I know I say a lot. I have said a lot. I know I talk too much, but I've swallowed down so many stories that didn't agree with me. I get tired of bringing up the past. So tell me one of yours. Lace your voice with starlight because Christ knows I'm scared of the dark. When I say the dark, I mean the silence. When I say the silence, I mean, please don't leave me. I don't want to be alone. Alone, this girl falls in the forest and who gives a shit if anyone's around and to hear it? Can, can you learn to love the garden when it looks like the underbrush? Looks like the darkest part of the fairy tale, the bit they leave out the stories? I'm not a princess or warrior, not hero or sidekick, not magic wand or spindle prick. I'm the witch they left out of the story. The mostly good kind who comes and goes by bubble and holds you as you cry. My magic can hold back the dark. I mean, I love you. My name is the backbone of your question mark. That thing you didn't know, you didn't know. Let's find out together. I mean, hello. I can't wait to get to know you. Right, that's the window. And that's the door. No, no, that's another window. But what's, where am I? Oh, you know what? This is ridiculous, and I hate nature anyway. It's a beautiful night, isn't it? I mean, I'm glad for for your sake. Makes you appreciate it a whole lot more, the whole sunset thing. I don't know about you, but I am busy, like, all the time. And I try not to be, but I also try to be good at my full-time job and to cook all my meals from scratch and to exercise four times a week and you know drink enough water get enough sleep maintain healthy relationships and a social life so yes I admit it sometimes sunsets pass me by not tonight though we all have things to confess I heard that's fine. I mean, we're out in the middle of nowhere and I won't tell. I mean, we're all alone out here. This girl falls in the forest alone and of course I make a sound. We all do. Let's, let's get a little bit of a rhythm going. Join in if your card says that you have a cat. 
Join in if you don't eat meat. Join in if you work in medicine. Join in if all your children or your siblings are girls. <laughs> Actually, on second thought, maybe we shouldn't be just throwing that kind of information around because it wasn't that long ago that those simple things would have been a death sentence. But like I said, don't worry about it. I won't tell. Your secret's safe with me. I was never really that outdoorsy. I think people who hill walk for fun are psychopaths. But sometimes you just have to get out of the city. I mean, this isn't even my tent. Well, yes, technically, actually, it is my tent, but it's lived in my dad's garage for the past three years after he gave it to me, after I apparently said that I wanted to go camping more, like I've ever done it before in my life. <sighs> to be fair to him, he did try, try and teach me, my dad. Lots of things, like how to rewire a plug and change the oil in my car and change my tyres, but I just didn't listen. Seriously, if my life depended on it and your life's depended on it with a gun to my head... I couldn't tell you how to bleed a radiator. Sod this! Tea will make everything better. <sighs> oh! I mean, there's not much help my dad could do here. I mean, he's handy, but he's no bare bloody grouse. I'm giving him a bad rap, my dad. <laughs> my dad taught me loads of things, but I think the things that stuck with me are the things that I learned from his mother, my granny. My granny is a storyteller unlike any other. She'd open her mouth and no matter where you were, you would think you were here. Somewhere in the Scottish woodland, sitting at the feet of a master word weaver. She had me every time. I was spellbound. I don't remember my earlier memories, but she is the blankets and the sing songs and the tiny shoes all at the same time. My grandmother never needed a fireside in an armchair to keep us listening intently at her feet. My grandmother keeps stories stored in the folds of her skirt, strapped to her tiny heeled shoes, grasped in her silkworm hands. When she can't sleep, my grandmother thinks of every street from Anderson Cross to Finiston and the people that she used to know there, Anthony Street, McIntyre Street, Hyde Park, Guest, Oak, Lansfield, Port, Elliot and Gray. My grandmother sings the old songs, the crooning ones, ones like Ali Bally Bee and Daisy Daisy, I'm in primary three. And the teacher asks, does anyone know the words? And my hand shoots up, desperate to impress, to let out all my grandmother instilled in me. It took me 20 years to figure out she taught me the wrong words. Instead of a romantic verse about marriage, a bicycle and a carriage, my version goes. Daisy, Daisy, where do you make her that? Upset the table and nearly killed the cat. The cat began to bubble, so I hit it with a shovel. It went to bed with a broken head and a face like a kangaroo. My grandmother tucks a wicked sense of humour up her sleeve with her handkerchief, hides a wicked smile behind her hands. She has all the time in the world for you to get the joke and she's laughing still. If you don't laugh, we'll greet, she says. And there have been days where we were left with nothing but the loss. She lost a home to a war that crept into her classrooms. Lost a brother to illness, lost a sister and breast to cancer, lost a husband to heart attack, lost teeth, lost weight, lost the protective tissue in the soles of her feet, but she still dances three times a week and she's laughing still. She used to walk us everywhere. Summer holidays smell like the streets of my cities, the museums and the galleries, the swimming pools and the libraries. My grandmother taught me how to be a library without ever opening a book. If I could, I'd spend all my time untying the histories from her throat, 
Photographing the maps worn into the soles of her feet, I wish I could make library of all that she is because my grandmother is the city of Glasgow. She is laundry steam breast and close style artistry. She is the subway and the seagulls after your newspaper poke rat chips. She is the number six bus and Buchanan Street buskers. She is the shipyards and the shed. She is spit at the Clyde. She is whiskey and water. She is the pub. She is the old songs, the ones you apparently make up all the words to and I... I am the legacy of both grandmother and city with giant shoes to fill. People make it and it makes the people from her to my father to me. So if you never get the chance to meet my grandmother, that's okay. Set your feet loose on the city of Glasgow and in between the awful bird song of screaming people, traffic rumbling off curbs, the symphonies of Sucky Hall Street, you'll start to hear the old songs. And that is where you'll always find her. Stop to listen. Start in Anderson Cross. Work your way to Finiston. See who you meet along the way. Anthony, McIntyre, Hyde Park guest, Oak, Lansfield, Port, Elliot, and Gray. My granny would love this place because this is the absolute perfect place for a story and I've got a belter for you and you don't seem to be going anywhere, so shall we? The year is 1729 and our story takes place in the Highlands of Scotland. In Dornoch, there lived a woman called Janet Horn, but everyone called her Jenny. Now, Jenny had a daughter who was born with twisted and misshapen hands and feet. The villagers were always suspicious of Jenny and her strange, shy daughter. After a while, suspicions turned to whisperings. I heard the girl's hands and feet are like cloven hoofs. I heard the devil himself shot the girl. I heard Jenny Horn by the light of the moon rode on her own daughter's back apt to meet with the devil himself. These whisperings turned into out and out accusations until one night they came for them both. They battered down the cottage door and grabbed them. The daughter escaped and poor Jenny was placed in t inside a tar barrel and set alight. It is said that as the flames rose higher, she stretched out a hand and said, mmm, that's a bonny warming, before the fire rose and took her. They searched for months, but they never found Jenny Horn's daughter. It's like she vanished. Less than a decade later, the practice of witch burning was outlawed across the British Isles and to this day, Jenny Horn is known as the last witch. Told you, absolute belter. I've always loved stories like that, stories about witches. Like ever since I was a kid with Mildred Hubble, the worst witch. And then there was Samantha and Sabrina, um, the Sanderson sisters, the Halliwell sisters, Glinda and Elphaba, oh, Willow. Something about these stories just draws me in like nothing else. Something about these women, they just have so much power. But speaking of power, there is one woman who has been with me my whole life and I owe her everything. Dear Hermione, when you first floated down the hallways of the Hogwarts Express hair like you just licked the inside of a toaster, I knew you were the one for me. Robes on, spells memorised, paying no attention to the boys with the dirty noses, broken glasses or dead parents, because you knew what was important. Yes, Hermione, you knew you were there on the Hogwarts Express from platform nine and three quarters because you were magic. First year, Hermione Granger and the deductive reasoning that saves Harry's ass. You were so small but full of sass, Muggleborn and Gryffindor. You made your voice echo like a roar because bitches gotta know that it is Leviosa, not Leviosa. Second year, Hermione Granger and the art of taking one for the team. You had to deal with racist, stupid people, a big dirty basilisk. You still solved the problem while you were petrified. 
third year Hermione Granger and that brief time you were a Time Lord. Determined to fit all your learning into a little hourglass with so much class, refused to grasp up Professor Lupin just for being a werewolf. Fourth year Hermione Granger and the epiphany that you can be both hot and smart. You made it clear that you are no one's afterthought, only idiots leave you to be last resort. Fifth year, Hermione Granger in the year you had to do literally everything because Harry Potter's a giant freaking emo. Dumbledore's army came to be because you gathered a small motley crew of others who knew the only way to do what was right was to be prepared to stand and fight. Sixth year, Hermione Granger and the danger of copying someone else's homework. You told him, to be fair, you told him. Seventh year, Hermione Granger and the longest walk in the woods ever because someone let Harry Potter pick the route. Followed by a fight to the death, all in the name of what is good. You gave up everything for hope of a better world. You were always the best friend and never the girlfriend. Your first love was always books. You never let anyone tell you who you are is wrong. And in a world full of JKRs, we all needed to hear that. Dear Hermione, you made this little girl sitting alone with a book in her lap. No, you can sit alone with a book in your lap and still be the hero of your story. Dear Hermione, you made this teenager understand the only thing more important than your education is your bravery and your kindness. Dear Hermione, you made this woman understand that no matter how many of them come for you there will always be daughters of witches that they forgot to burn dear Hermione it's been 20 years and you still make me believe in magic if you wonder if I carry these with me everywhere the answer is yes I absolutely do it's getting really dark now if only I could light a bloody fire. I'd suggest you sleep, but there's not much point in that, is there? I wouldn't be able to sleep either. It's okay, I'll, I'll stay up with you. I made this years ago. After uni, I backpacked a whole bunch of places, New Zealand and Dubai and Fiji and Australia, Canada. And while I was there, instead of buying souvenirs and taking up much needed backpack space, I bought t-shirts and posted them home. When I got back, I used my meager sewing skills to put them all together. I like having it with me. It reminds me of a time when I was Fearless. I don't really know what I'm doing here. I don't know, this all felt very Hermione book seven, this wee adventure. The old Sarah would do something like this, only she wouldn't just stop like 40 minutes away from the city, she'd actually be off along the West Highland Way in pubs, talking to strangers and causing all sorts of trouble. Well, I say the old me, quite the opposite actually, the young me, the 22 year old me. I don't really recognize her anymore. Sometimes I don't believe that it was me who did all those amazing things. Don't get me wrong. See, if I wanted to, I could, I could do it. I could still just go. I'd, I'd take off and I'd start in Berlin and I'd just go from there and I would drive on the wrong side of the road and meet people on the wrong side of the tracks and we'd drink beer and swap colloquialisms like boggin and bobag. And I'd take thousands of pictures and I'd spam your Instagram with the hashtag wanderlust and I'd be so disappointed because no matter how many filters I put on it, it would never do any justice to all the colors I could pick up with my eyes. I, I'd do all those things, but I have a job. <laughs> I 
I'm not that girl anymore. I've lost it. I've dimmed. Do you believe in ghosts? Does that prickling you sometimes get on the back of your neck, is that ever something you give a second thought to? The person you used to be? You know, sometimes I write women into being that come from a place that I don't have inside me. Does your body ever ache with the need to be someone else? Does your body ever feel inclined to do anything about it? Sit on the bed quietly. She'll come back when she's ready. On the nights you're a ghost in your own bed and the summer heat creeps in the window and licks up the inside of your thighs and laughs at all your haunting when all you are is burning. Don't forget to breathe. You see, fire needs air to burn too and this isn't your first time scorching. The summers here are few and far between but when the heat comes it can be suffocating, stuffing you in to straight jacket stickiness and groping at your skin. It's okay to be missing him when you're in each other's warmth. On the nights, everything is so close, it pushes you away. Think of the thunderstorms you hold in your hands and their power to clear things. You see, sadness is a subtle phantom, slipping you out of your body before you've ever felt its possession. You are no one's possession, remember that. When you're floating above yourself, you are the girl with the subway system beneath the surface of your city skin always rushing, never stopping, never sleeping, so many places to be and you begin to lose yourself in the dark on the nights, all the lights go out, do not be afraid. Remember all the places you went and the pieces of yourself that stayed, remember not every ghost has to die to get there and not everything that dies has to stay dead, breathe, just breathe, follow every subway line like it's the only story you have left and burn, you are allowed to burn, think of all the great things that happen when you do the way your feet pound the pavement and maybe your worst stories hide in the pages of your diaries, remember you are scary too and not every fire has to bring the world to its knees. Sometimes, all it takes is a spark. So keep matches in your teeth and show them off in all your smiles. Keep the heat in your heartbeat, grip it with your lightning hands and feel your own power. Light up the room, light up your home, feel the walls shake under your tempest body, ghost no more, haunter no more, somewhere, a girl with her heels in her hands runs to catch the last subway home, somewhere, an old house creaks with the memories of times long gone, someone lights a candle, someone starts a campfire, a volcano stirs and sighing to shit themselves because they all thought it was long dead and you lie in bed and breathe. The arms of the one who loves you most, who fans your flames with the flickers in his chest, holds you a little tighter. A cool breeze climbs in the window and the sky gets a little lighter. He grabs the duvet and pulls you both under and outside the air starts to clear with the first rumbles of thunder. Feel your own power. Hold it, hold yourself together, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid.
I have always been afraid of the dark. I used to make my parents leave the hall light on and my door open a little bit, just, just so I could see everything that was in my room. So I was so convinced that there was someone else there, right next to my face. I was meant to get less afraid as I got older, not more. I, this, this is a time to be scared though, isn't it? I mean, what's to stop them? You know, them. From breaking down your cottage door. No, I'm serious, who's stopping him? They are the ones that limit your choices on what to do with your body. They're the ones that ask what you were wearing, whether you were asking for it. They treat your reproductive system like it's a calling. They get to decide on things like that. Why stop there? What else would they do? Do you think I'm being overdramatic? Paranoid? Hysterical? It's funny that hysterical, pardon the pun. Female hysteria used to be a common medical diagnosis for women. You were considered hysterical if you ever showed symptoms such as nervousness, anxiety, fainting, insomnia, loss of appetite for food or sex, or God forbid, you showed that you actually liked sex. Medically, if you had a tendency to cause trouble for others. It was categorized as a disease, even though all of hysteria symptoms are synonymous with normal functioning female sexuality. In extreme cases, a woman would have been forced to enter an insane asylum or undergone a surgical hysterectomy. Hysteria has a new name now, mass psychogenic illness. Put simply, it's when intense psychological pressure causes the body to have physical symptoms. Put another way, smoke without fire. Stop me if you know this one. It's 1692 in British colonised Massachusetts. The settling communities are all religious Puritans, which is why the tensions between the settlers and the Native Americans are tense, fraught and violent. In a small village, some unfortunate events, some normal, such as a bad harvest and a particularly cruel winter, some not so normal, are about to bring this whole community to its knees. In the house of the not well-liked minister, Samuel Paris, tensions run especially high. One day, Samuel's nine-year-old daughter starts to make animal noises. She starts to twitch starts to moan, starts to thrash around. Eventually she starts hiding under tables like an abused animal and she starts to scream. The very next day, her older cousin Abigail starts exhibiting the exact same symptoms. And it spreads. One by one, the women in Salem start exhibiting similar symptoms and are quickly accused of witchcraft. Over 200 people were accused. 20 were executed. All because two small girls were under so much pressure in their communities, in their homes, in their lives, that they started showing physical symptoms of that pressure. First Abigail and then the other women of the community and it wasn't just Salem. If you open any history book, you will find women under pressure struggling to survive. They weren't all so lucky. My name is Agnes Simpson. I'm a midwife. I was the first of 70 burns in the North Berwick witch trials. I was good at my job. I only delivered healthy babes. They were just all girls. It's 1590. I'm Anne Boleyn, queen for a time. They say it was witchcraft that turned Henry from the church. Witchcraft! They didn't know what to do with power when they saw it in a woman. They didn't know what to do with a woman who couldn't bear sons. It's 1536. 
My name is Agnes Waterhouse. I had a cat called Satan. It was a joke. They say I cursed their livestock. I cursed their livestock and defied God. I defied God and lay with the devil. But they never tried me in a church. Oh no, they were too afraid to let their precious God see what they did to me. It's 1566. They were all beheaded or burned alive. At sunrise for what you have confessed, you will join them. We are called witches for feeling each other's pain and what makes it worse is that they put the blame for all of this on us because we have a tendency to cause trouble for others. But that would never happen now, right? This level of mass fear and scapegoating wouldn't happen now. We are not one girl screaming away from all hell breaking loose, are we? You know, looking back on Jenny Horn's symptoms, on her strangeness, her speaking to herself, her behavior, the reasons that they burned her are nothing more than symptoms of dementia. Hell has already broken loose. Domestic abuse. What were you wearing? College campus hunting grounds blaming migrants for society's problems? Alabama. Northern Ireland. Boys will be boys, real boys don't cry. Nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. Anti-vaxxers, transphobia, me too. Don't you dare tell me this is smoke without fire. We've been burning since the 16th fucking century. Are you scared yet? Is the tingling on the back of your neck through to under your tongue? Pill you cannot get your mouth to swallow, unwittingly getting a taste of what they are force feeding. Are you scared yet? Are you squashing it down deep and hidden and part of you like the bones and the skeletons in your closet that you never put there? The ones with the eyes that still stare, watch you everywhere. Are you scared of what's going to come out of the furniture at night if you ever dared tell? Are you scared yet? Is the ink you swell around your mouth fine as wine and fit for decanting to page turn to ash? Turn to gristle in your teeth? Turn to nothing? Turn to black hole? Making negative of the universe you held in your soul or worse? Has it been siphoned out of your speech? and into their pens, already rewriting a version of the story that you hold in your veins. We all know how this one goes. It's a cautionary tale. Are you scared yet? Scared of letting go of your anger? Your rage? The untamable tempest battering your rib cage. I've swallowed down so many stories that didn't agree with me. I got tired of bringing up the past. The tingling in my throat is from when I swallowed coals taken from the hearth of grandmother courage and let it burn. It turned to poison and I got sick, but I got better. I got stronger. Let them choke on the taste of what they made me festering and broken and ripe for the picking in the beginning. There was a blank page, bright eyes and a storybook age. By torchlight we hid, it did nothing to stop him. In cupboards we hid, it did nothing to stop him. In darkness we hid, it did nothing to stop him. The only thing that did was a mouthful of courage. And the spilled ink was mopped. The stain still on our lives for years, the truth swelled around my clever mouth. And now it's too late to let it come out. Are you scared yet? You should be. Because I rose from the ashes of all that you made me in this time round. I'm fireproof. I'm the proof of what can happen when you tear down the walls and let the light in. Open the doors and set the worlds to right. And the pit of your pain is the heart of my flame. And I will let it light you up 
I am half the world. I am angry and I am tired, but you cannot keep me in the dark forever. I don't hide by torchlight anymore. This is the part of me that no one has ever seen before. And I'm sorry if it's hard for you to watch, but stories are powerful things. So while I have you, moth to flame, she's coming for you. I am coming for you. We are all coming for you. We will have our revenge and it starts right here with this. Just this. I'll never be afraid of you again. Ali, Bali, Ali, Bali, be sitting on your mummy's knee. Greeting for a wee bobby. To buy some Coulter's candy. My mum used to sing me that song. When I can't sleep, I imagine I'm on an island long ago. I stand on the cliff top or the beach and stare out at the water and want to be rescued and forgotten all at once. So on the days like this, I try to remember all the songs my mum used to sing to me when I was a baby to bring me back to myself. I love the water. It's just so big. It's the only thing that I'm terrified of that I still love the limitless, mysterious possibility of it all. Well, not the only thing. I was one week early, which never happens to me. My mum never had, you know, the chat with me, only handed me a book with a confident looking preteen on the cover and said, read this. And if you have any questions, come and talk to me. I smuggled it into school and I showed it to everybody and we howled at the cartoon scrotums and then the word scrotum and then we fell quiet when we saw what would happen to our bodies. I never asked my mother any questions except from one. What if I get pregnant, you know, by accident? What I meant was, should I tell you, if I do, 
She never gave me a real answer, but I should have asked her more questions. I was one week early because there must have been a chapter missing from that book because it never told me to look for the day that boys become quiet and learn to speak in a code it never told me that if your body grows beyond a certain size, it becomes public property, a monument to development. It never told me growing up was going to be so damn hard that your mind would grow with your body and experience pains of their own. It should have mentioned mental health and peer pressure and managing stress. And you know, it would have been so hard in the section about periods to say that when using tampons for the first time, don't use the same ones your mother does. The woman's had two children for Christ's sake. Have a little common fucking sense. I really should have asked my mother more questions. In high school, she was two weeks late. The right boy, the wrong time. Too young to play mother, too old to ask her mother to hold her hand. And it should have been him. He who pitched a tent inside her self-worth and built them both a home. But in instead it was me and I was 30 seconds too late. And breaking down the bathroom door is all that could have been spilled down her hands. It wasn't wrong she wasn't wrong an impossible decision between that and the life she envisioned for herself i asked my mother if that ever happens to me should i tell you she said i'm the first person you tell and stroked my hair as i cried for all the right choices that come at the wrong times and all the arms that never get to carry never told me growing up was going to be so damn hard at a party. My dad's 60th, my cousin brought her newborn baby, her name is Isla, and she floated through a sea of arms and aunties, no rocking disturbed her slumber, and she drifted into the port of my chest. And all the seas quieted and all eyes looked to me as someone said, that suits you. There were many years in too late in learning that I am not port, not harbour, not resting place or lapping shore. I compass point courage and adventurer mind. I'm the road, I'm the captain and I live my life with my arms outstretched. These arms were not meant to carry, ready to catch everything that comes my way and their wistful stares wrestling my arms from sail into cradle tie me to this love this is what it is to love when you're a woman isn't this what you wanted isn't this what we wanted for you doesn't mother just suit you so damn well i was one week early which never happens to me. I was one week early and it even felt different, looked different, was different. Maybe my normal sign telling me that I wasn't pregnant was this time telling me that I was. Past tense. I'll never know for sure, but it wasn't the right time. I was born one day late because my mum was due when she had tea in the park tickets and she. I was born into a world of music and I have never stopped dancing. My mother taught me how to look after myself. My father taught me that I would never be alone. My sister taught me how to be sister, be friend, be storyteller. And those are things that I think I could pass on and I see her. She has all the music of her father and she has my way with words. She is him and she is me and she will grow to be free to pick the labels that she wears for herself and damn it, she will know that we all change and she is free to do the same. So if she is ever called by the wind and sea and leaves me once again, empty harbor, I'll keep my love burning in the lighthouse, point her north, wish her fair weather, tell her never look back. She will be free as I am now to weather her storms and seas. We are connected by the oceans that boil under our skin and I've been making waves my whole life. I don't think that's gonna change anytime soon. I was one week early, 
one day late. One life inside that's mine to give and maybe she will only ever be beautiful possibility. My best story, maybe the best is yet to come, but if she does, she will be right on time. Right, so I've been thinking a lot about Jenny Horn's daughter. You know the one who got away. Isn't it strange that she managed to escape a mob of angry villagers when all accounts of her say that she had twisted and deformed hands and feet. She ran away. Did she, I? You know, once I was at a writing class and I was saying this poem that I knew by heart and the teacher stopped me in the middle and she said, I don't believe you. Turns out if you say the same word over and over again, it starts to lose its meaning. Watch. Witch, 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 witch. Witch, 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 witch. Doesn't sound like a word anymore, does it? Say the same lie over and over again and you start to believe it's true. What if we were wrong? What if we were lied to? Have you ever heard a lie about yourself and been quick to believe it? I have. High school sucked for me and I was always told just keep your head down and no one will bother you and it'll all be fine and it wasn't true but that just stopped me from dressing how I wanted to saying what I wanted to being who I wanted to for fear of persecution we are taught to be so afraid of persecution for everything you know Sometimes I like to imagine what would happen if certain things just vanished overnight. Like for example, imagine how many billion pound industries would just fold if one day everyone woke up completely happy with the way they looked. Completely confident and comfortable with their hair, their faces and their bodies. Hair dye, diet pills, spray tan, shaping underwear, all makeup, it would just go. Here's another question. What would happen if all over the world women woke up one morning and were no longer afraid of everyday persecution just for being themselves? Imagine this. Jenny Horn's daughter ran away and started a new life right here. Here in the wild and open, away from the name calling and staring and speculation. Imagine what her life could have become just her in this incredible place. I, I do know what I'm doing here. Something always brings me back here, here to this incredible place where all our stories meet. There's something about this land that never fails to make me brave. If you ask me where I hail from, I will tell you from a place of giants, a place where the mountains were made by goddesses who carry them in their skirts, a place where the land is as wild as the creatures that live on it, my home, a place I carry through the grit in my spirit, the grit under my fingertips, the waters clean and cold lace around my mouth, fill me with so much wonder, fill me with so much wilderness alapa. Her name tumbles down my spine until I'm standing straight. It tumbles off my tongue and knocks me off my feet. She leaves such big shoes to fill. My bare unworthy feet kick up the dust of the roads they've never seen before. They could swear they've seen them before. There's something in the whisper of the wind that's telling me to run. Run with all the strength in my legs. Anywhere, everywhere, but never backwards to see the sea and her curved coast neckline craned for the kissing of rocks and sand to live like no one is watching like it's just us to scream with abandon she understands there's a song in my veins it sounds like the hills in the morning it sounds like the rivers drumming their own thunder to answer the sky it sounds like my grandmother humming in the quiet moment she thinks that no one is watching it sounds like my grandfather playing the spoons his whiskey fingers hammering out songs and beats my father's 
chest, inherited. It sounds like a story I was destined to hear. It sounds like a song lost to the years. If only I could find her. I'd ask her to make me brave. To sing the song of the ancients, raise this truth from its grave. I'm a descendant of the forests and the hills and glades. I'm a child of Alatha. I was born to be brave. I will not falter or choke because I was baptized in the water straight from her throat. And maybe I will never find the giants with mountains in their skirts. For they don't belong in this world full of buses and coffee makers and collarless shirts. But this is still her land where the wild women grow. And I can walk her roads, they always lead me home. And I can sing the songs that we all forgot, that we know. Hysteria, mass psychogenic illness. One person suffers and we all suffer together. Like when our periods sync up. We feel each other's pain. What if it didn't have to be that way? What if, instead of hysteria being physical symptoms of mass psychological pressure, hysteria was physical symptoms of mass psychological well-being? What if the act of lifting each other up sparked joy in us, made us feel better, gave us the physical strength to get through the day, gave us the strength to get through all the shit we've been before, all the darkness? What if we felt our own power and then we shared it? Wouldn't that be magical? I have a confession to make myself. Jenny Horn wasn't actually the last witch. History forgot about another because away from the questioning and the speculation and the staring, Jenny Horn's daughter's life became one of beauty and prosperity and power. And she passed those lessons on to her daughter and her daughter and her daughter. Her descendants, many and mighty, are here around you constantly. You will see them in the streets. You will see them on buses. They're serving tables. They're teaching children. They're mathematicians. They're filmmakers. They're poets. They are in your home with you. You all brought your confessions into this room tonight. Things that they would have burned you for. I have something to tell you. They don't burn people at the stake anymore. That stopped with Jenny 300 years ago. So why are we still living our lives like they're going to batter down our cottage doors and burn us in tar barrels? The things they would have burned you for are the things that make you special now, make you powerful. My power comes from my words. It comes from being inspired and uplifted by the people around us. My power comes from you and I celebrate every little bit of magic that I have left and so should you. So you, what does your card say? I have a cat. This person has a cat, yes! Always remember the things they would have burned you for, the things that make you special now, make you powerful. It is the thing that ties us all together. It is the answer to all the questions. It is the spark that can set the world on fire. I went back to the beginning and found everything that I was looking for in your faces. Felt so much power in your presence. There is a curse that lies on all of us. You can hear it. In cracked hip bones and tiny first cries, you can feel it in your back, in your shoulders, and the soles of your feet. But this is not the old magic. This is just the brick after brick in building his heaven. We build our vocabulary around the towers, around us, learn to call it home. But this is not the old magic. The old magic is out there. It survived the hurled brick by brick. It found a way to be uprooted, trusted itself in the wind and took seed in our chest. We have it in every heartbeat where she is needed most. We are the guardians of her mother and her mother and every cracked hip they try to rebrand a stolen rib the story changes over time the truth remains the same good or bad i will believe you believe me they will still try to come for you silence you turn your bloody body into inkwell use your feathers to rewrite retell but remember no one page could hold your subway map plot lines you can hold power lines have them send you on a journey no manuscript in the embers could ever erase our story and we will never be afraid afraid of fire again.
We are the women with matches in our teeth and gunpowder chests. We are new moons and fresh starts, harbors and stitches. We are family. We are witches. We know the stakes are high, but being loved by us is so damn magical. We've come a long way to this powerful and it is not easy. In fact, it is so damn hard to bleed kindness from your chest full of smoke and ember. Remember, it doesn't matter if you're a roaring flame or a cigarette kiss. Musket wit or infernal grit, for we all perfected the art of rising from the ashes long before they ever thought to use it against us. Light up every room. Go through this life scorching sometimes all it takes is a spark and that is all we ever need take it light it up burn